Making games is hard. You need art, programming, game design, sound design. It's really a miracle that any game gets made at all. So I'm going to try and make one in a week by myself. Logitech challenged me to make a game in a week, so a big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. They even sent out some free equipment to help with the process. The Studio Series desk mat. It's so smooth and clean, it almost makes me not want to eat at my desk. But I will anyway. The MX Master 3S mouse. Made of 27% consumer recycled plastic, with new quiet clicking, USB-C quick charging and ultra fast scrolling. So I can scroll social media and procrastinate even better than before. The MX Mechanical Keyboard, made out of 45% consumer recycled plastic, wireless, illuminated with quiet mechanical keys. It's built for performance. Mm, not that kind of performance. This kind of performance. Ooh, this one's my favourite. The Logitech Brio Webcam. And setting all this up was super easy. All I had to do was plug in the little dongle and off I go. It's time for the challenge theme. A developer who is sucked into their own code. What would you make for that type of game? And let me know in the comments, but the first thought that actually came into my mind was some sort of platforming game where you're the developer running along the lines of your code, jumping on bugs to squash them. Maybe that's just a bit too obvious. What if it was metaphorically sucked into your own code? What if I made a spaghetti code simulator where you just spam type to write as many spaghetti lines as you can as fast as you can maybe they can be like crazy little events that pop up bugs that crawl down the screen and you have to type the right prompt as they appear on the screen or i didn't really figure out the core game loop when i was brainstorming these ideas but that was enough to get me started anyway and i wasn't the only one taking part in this challenge either i even got the opportunity to play robert's game and it is a masterpiece it's a 3d puzzle game where you read lines of code found in game to figure out how to solve each level it's super unique full of character and charm and actually really challenging. If anyone can figure out level 6, you gotta let me know. I didn't get to play Zygers unfortunately, but I'm so excited to see what they come up with in their video. So definitely go and check out their channels and see their perspective on this challenge as well. So I started off by getting some text on the screen when you type, but it looks kind of ugly. So I made it green, but it's far too big. It doesn't look like you're writing code at all. So I made it smaller. When you're typing, just showing up the letters that you're typing is not really coding. You need to have like if statements and functions and variables and all that cool stuff. So now when you type a letter, you get your favorite lovable code snippets, such as hello world and subscribe to soul tunes. And it feels like you're coding already just by spamming the buttons, which is super satisfying. But it's not enough. So I started to add the bug with the text prompts, which I didn't really know how to do. Fortunately, I found this YouTube tutorial by Jim Biv, which basically solved all of my problems. Got the bug to respond to text. I could even make it move. And I introduced some spawn points to get some bugs spawning into the game. Day two. We got some bugs, but they need some custom prompts. So what I started off doing was created a prompt list that they could choose from, but I wanted them to all be associated with programmery type words. And with that in, it was already a lot more challenging and satisfying, but it's endless. There's no real punishment for actually missing one of the prompts. So I made it so when the bug hits the bottom of the screen, it restarts the game. There you go. E easy game loop. It's core game loop. It's done. Ship it. Maybe if I could do one major task a day, that would be enough to get me through the whole seven days. The basic idea for the atmosphere that I want to get across in this game is that you're sitting at an old PC and spamming code. The graphics would be one bit with an accent color. Obviously, the accent color has to be green because that looks like the Matrix. It's quick to produce as well. And I've never made a game in a week before. So I'm creating the artwork in Clip Studio at a canvas size of 112 by 112 pixels. I really love working in the one bit style. There's just something so relaxing about only having two things to worry about, black and white. And that's it. I started to create the little bugs that would be coming down screen as well. I imagined them like actual bugs because I don't know what a computer bug actually looks like. I did a couple of different designs for these bugs as well, trying to leave some space for where the text will go inside of them. Then I spent some time setting them up in game. But the sizes and the text were too small. I was fiddling with this for so long and the longer words just wouldn't fit on. And the pixels looked too chunky for the text in the background. So I went back to Clip Studio to upsize the artwork to a 240 by 240 pixel size. I started working on a new bug as well, which gave me a lot more room to add in some detail. But I still kept getting that weird cut off text. Eventually, Actually, I got it to work, but I had to sort of scrap my original design idea and instead just cutting the bug in half and placing the word in there. Day three. 
So day three started with animating the bug. I did this in a sprite, just a very simple walk animation as it's coming down the screen. After I finished animations and exported the sprite sheets, I then just had to put it in the game engine in Godot. I then started planning the scores and how all of that would work before putting it in the game as well. When coding this, I used a singleton so that the scores can persist throughout the game so that I can use that value for leaderboards later on. Big brain. With the score working in the game, we now have a simple basis for a high score based game. But I'm still not quite sure what the game is at this point. I didn't do too much pre-production, so I spent some time in paint again, brainstorming some ideas. Typing for too long feels a little bit like a chore, so I thought it would be a good idea to put a time limit on the game. I thought of like a coffee event where the coffee pops into the screen and it increases your time by 10 seconds or something like that. A YouTube tutorial pop-up event where you have to spam spacebar to play a video, which will give you some sort of bonus. And another pop-up event where you have to copy and paste to get some more code which will give you like a multiplier bonus or something like that. So I started implementing the time-based gameplay with just a simple timer. When the time runs out, the game is over. And I started working on the coffee cup graphics. I generally use a mouse for pixel art, so that's what I was doing here. The hand was actually super difficult until I remembered that I actually have hands and I can just use my own hands as reference. After finishing that off, I just implemented the coffee with the animations in the game engine. And all you have to do when it comes up is click on it to drink it. I was actually concerned that clicking on it would take away from the main typing mechanic. I also kind of like it. It's stressful. It keeps you on edge. And realistically, if you are typing and you need to take a drink, you have to move your hand away from your keyboard, which is realism. It's a realism based spaghetti code simulator. <laughs> So after that, I started working on the pop-up, which was fairly simple. Then all I had to do was set it up and animate it in Godot. So I programmed these events in as well as a multiplier system. So when you do consecutive events, you actually get a score multiplier as some sort of reward. I got the window pop-up working with text that changes color when you type in the correct prompt for just a little bit of feedback because I thought that really needed it. I then started cleaning up the main graphics just a little bit and started making the typing hands as well. I used Asprite to animate the hands, just a couple frames of typing. Fortunately, I only had to do one hand, then I could just copy and paste it and then flip it horizontally to save me a lot of time. Pop that in the game so that they animate when you're typing and that's the end of day three. Day four. Started the day cleaning up the bonus multiplier and putting some new UI elements on the screen. But with only three days left, the game was a complete mess. There's just so many different systems. I knew if I wanted to finish this project, I had to get all of this under control today. At this moment when playing, there was too much emphasis on the bugs. I wanted to be a spam Cody spaghetti type in game. And that just kind of took away the focus a little bit too much. And I also noticed with a bunch of bugs on screen, there's actually an error that happens with targeting the right bug sometimes. So I made it so that you can backspace to delete your inputs. I thought it would be a good idea to not only add a little session timer, not just so you know how long you've been playing for, but also to help me when balancing it. So I know how long the total session time is. I started brainstorming to figure out what the actual call game loop would be, and this is what I came up with. So the call loop, you have 30 seconds to write as many spam lines as possible. When the time is up, the game is over. The secondary loop would be the events pop-up. Events will pop up and challenge you and sort of get in your way from spam typing. You got the bugs, the coffee, and the pop-up. And the third loop or system is the combo reward. And this kind of adds a reason for the events instead of just ignoring them. Imagine it's sort of like a multitasking stress management game. Kind of like actual devving. <laughs> But that's just the loop idea. I spent hours playtesting this, trying to balance it. Tweaking systems like the event animations to make them more consistent. Calculating the difficulty scaling. Is it impossible? Is it too easy? And when I was done playtesting it, I even did some more playtesting. Is it progressing too fast or not enough? Is clicking the coffee really annoying as a different mechanic or is it a fun challenge? I tried adjusting the coffee event a little bit and that just brought me even more bugs. Balancing the game was an absolute nightmare and I felt lost throughout most of this day. But one thing that finally brought it together was simplifying it and making the events more universal and made it so that every event pop-up has the same reward when you hit it. And I'm not saying it's balanced because it's based purely on my skill level but at least it feels like a game now. Day four was a long day. Day five. So day five got started and I was feeling a little bit burnt out from the crazy playtesting sessions of day four, but I managed to get started planning out the stats for the end screen. After that, I started doing some UX design and paint, trying to figure out the flow of the menus and how they'd all fit together. I then started working on the main menu and I decided the game was going to be called Spag Bool. Spaghetti code, spaghetti bolognese, also known as Spag Ball here in the UK, and a Boolean is a coding term, so Spag Boolean or Spag Bool. Genius. So I worked on the main menu in that title in Clip Studio and then just put it in the engine. Now the game works from the menu screen. I had an idea to pop the style a little bit and that was to put in a CRT shader. I got this from a website called Godot Shaders, super useful. This took a while actually to balance the visual clarity with the style. Sometimes less is more. I think I started on the end screen creation which is a play on blue screen of death, but obviously green, which is what happens when your computer malfunctions. It's kind of nice to actually see all of these stats at the end of the game to see how you did. And we have a full visual game loop now, a menu, the game and the
and the end screen. But I did think this game is kind of complicated to just pick up, so I got to work on a tutorial. I just duplicate the main game scene and create some custom functions that would lead you through each step of the tutorial. So you start with the spam typing and then go through each of the events. Once you've done all those, you can choose to start the game, quit, go back to the menu or whatever. But hopefully it's useful for new players. I haven't really tested it, so I don't know. Day six. Tried making a bug destroy animation in Ace Sprite. I started to program that bug explosion into the game. But for some reason, I just couldn't get it to work. I didn't want to spend all day trying to figure this out, so I just left it and moved on. And this wouldn't really be a game without some screen shake. So I tried implementing that and it was super satisfying, but maybe a bit too distracting at times. Just like the CRT screen effect from before, sometimes less is more. I thought I'd try getting leaderboards to work because that's something I really wanted to put in the game. Luckily for me, there's an awesome tutorial for this online and a backend service for Godot called Silent Wolf, which can host all the scores for you for free. This was all really straightforward to set up. I just followed the tutorial and all of the examples on the site. I made a little screen so the player could input their name and then it would show the leaderboards when you submit your score. I had to set up a custom leaderboard scene, which was a complete nightmare with the UI. It just did not want to be central to the screen. I tried so many things. Eventually I got it to work, but I really hope I never have to touch that part of the game ever again. I think it only shows the top 20 for now. So if you want to get your scores up there, I guess just get good. Day seven. I started the final day by polishing up the main game art. Put that in the game to check it out and then started working on the audio. I thought it'd be super fun to try recording the sounds myself for the audio. Coffee, typing, and the wind chimes. I then took these sounds and bit crushed them in Audacity using a free plugin called Crush. This gives them a nice retro sound. I started implementing them in the game by creating an audio manager singleton that would be responsible for all the sounds and music in the game. I didn't really like how they were sounding. So I went back and recorded some more and created some alternative ones in BFXR. Finally had the new sound effects that I was happy with. For music, I browsed a while for some 8-bit or chiptune music, but none of it was really matching the vibe I was going for. I had an idea to use ambient office sounds, as if you're working in an actual office. Obviously, I had to bit crunch that to make it sound retro as well. With the music and the sounds together, it gives a really interesting atmosphere and experience when you're playing the game, so I decided to roll with it. I thought it'd be a good idea to add some sound buttons in the game as well, so you could turn off the sound effects in the music. I drew these directly on the monitor. Made sure they actually worked on game when you click them, and then I created a custom Godot splash screen so it fit nicely with the style of the game. The final task left to do was just to export it and host it on the itch so you can all play and try and beat my high score. There's probably a lot of bugs with it, so be careful. But let me know what you think anyway. Okay, so I'm going to play it right now and I'm going to see if I can get a high score. Let's go! Come on! Boom, look at that, fast fingers. If you spam the right buttons, you might actually get a word filled in for you. you notice that I'm nearly running out of time, but it's okay because when I am completing one of these events, like the bugs or the coffee right there, it's giving me extra time. Oh, oh no, oh my God, that was a subscribe one. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Easy, it's too easy for me, maybe. Maybe the dev is too good at the game. Maybe I've made it too easy. Uh oh, I missed that one, I say that. As soon as I say something like that, I miss, so. Uh, spam the buttons. Three seconds left. Get as much score as I can. Oh. Whew. And there it is, folks. I got 29,693 lines. Let's submit that to the leaderboard. Click on it. Put in Soul Tunes. Boom. Submit. Loading scores. Number one, Soul Tunes. Give it a shot if you like and see if you can beat it. That was a super difficult challenge. As a beginner developer, I was a bit too scared to try game jams myself, so a big thank you to Logitech for this opportunity and for sponsoring the video. After using this equipment for this project, I really do think this series is a solid choice for any creator or developer looking for some style, comfort and performance when bringing their ideas to life. The software allowed me to fully customize the buttons, which was useful, and the battery life is actually insane. I didn't need to charge it once. And you know, I really put this keyboard through its paces with all the typing I've been doing, and it still survived, and I've got no calluses on my fingers, so I'm impressed. Definitely check this series out if you're looking for some new equipment. There's a link in the description if you want to play this game, see if you can beat my high score, and thanks for watching.